galloping goose, this big silver, dull silver looking Wayne bus bodied tourist hauler. Six of these are put in the service at the beginning of the depression in 1931. And they, many of them started out with a Pierce Arrow limousine body and frame. And then they were totally rearranged. They did this because it was much cheaper to have a single driver that was the engineer and the, the brakeman and the, the, the everything and to pay for that one guy instead of three guys that had to do a steam engine. Plus the uh, maintenance was much, much lower on one of these. So they basically did the same thing. They hauled mail and some passengers and some LTL freight. That means less than car load freight. They had six of these galloping geese. Number one was rebuilt recently. We'll see that tomorrow in Ridgeway. Two, three, four, five, and six. You would think they'd all be gone, but they are all still alive uh, 90 years later. This is a 5500 series narrow gauge stock car. The double deck. They have an extra deck. The ones have no extra deck and they haul cattle. The double deck is for sheep, so these are called sheep cars. They did a lot of sheeping up to the high country in the spring and back out of the high country in the fall to market. So I built a model of 80 of these, each with their own number. The maximum weight on these was the tear weight, in other words how much weight you could put in was 5,500 pounds. With load was 30,000 pounds. They could stuff say 60 or 70 sheep in here. I don't know how they did it, but they said they did. bones here. Right here? Comes right, mainly. Right here is the main line. Oh, wow. Not that and they took it out in 53? Yep. Three, it was gone. They tried to save these old tanks and what they do is they put a new roof on them. That uh, center section in there is called the frost box. That's to keep uh, the water that's being pumped up into the tank from freezing. And once it gets in the tank, the tank has so much water it, it takes a long, long time to freeze. They can still put water in the locomotive. Big, big time mining area. Did I just bump something? Huh? Something just went deet deet deet. Did I press something? Uh oh. oh, oh. Did I press something here that I was supposed to? the trucks, it was time to relax.
miss all that off. It's his job. It's not his fault. But he's on a speakerphone oh. or on the phone with somebody all day long. <laughs> Okay, 1992, I was here to explore the Rio Grande Southern and my 89 XJ came around this corner. I was going 20 miles an hour, I hit washboard, I needed new shocks, everything started bouncing up and down. So the tail end of the Jeep went right over this cliff. So the first roll was an endo where the back comes over the top and goes right off the edge. But I was sideways. So the next, the next four rolls were barrel rolls. I took out several trees on the way down. First was an endo and then four more barrel rolls. And, and what, so you had to walk out or what happened? Yeah, I had to climb up the slope and it was dark. No <laughs> booze involved. Anyway, I lost my camera and a bunch of my models that I was bringing to meet with other guys who do the same thing. Uh, and, I heard uh, you lost your trombone. Oh yeah, my trombone flew out the back tailgate, which disintegrated on the first roll. And it was in a bag, not a hard case. And the car rolled right over and tacoed the bell on that. Wow. It, it got fixed, but it never played as good again. So this is the Vance Junction coal chute shot with a drone on our trip. And for reference, here is the same video with a separate video of Jeff's model in the bottom half.
1925, the Baldwin Locomotive Works produced 10 locomotives in the K36 class of engines. Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad was in the market for more powerful steam engines to ply their steep, narrow gauge rails through the Rockies. The number K36 corresponds to how much they could pull uphill without slipping the drive wheels, hence 36,000 pounds of tractive effort. By the 1970s, when the DNRGW wanted to dump the narrow gauge steam engines and railroads they ran on, an enterprising Florida entrepreneur in the states of Colorado and New Mexico each stepped in and gobbled up what was left to make a pair of very successful tourist railroads out of Durango, Colorado and Chama, New Mexico, thus preserving the steam legacy for the ages. Carl? Yeah. That, that track was really smooth. I subscribe to that. Did she say subscribe? Yeah, we're going to Las Vegas. Oh, look, cow! Oh, I forget it. That one is like the a big right there. What a bunch oh, of idiots. Yeah, stinks. that must be the one. My hair! In 1903, the Baldwin Locomotive Works produced 15 narrow-gauge steam locomotives of the K-27 class for the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railway. 27,000 pounds of tractive effort. Replaced within a couple decades by heavier locomotives that could pull more on the heavier track, these sleek locos were used on branch lines where their weight would not tear up the track. Coming down a 4% grade for miles, the train's brakes literally smoked all the way down. Okay, that brings us to the end of our journey. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.